I like to start with something funny. I heard about these three men, a Baptist, a Catholic, and a Charismatic. They died on the same day and went to heaven. St. Peter met them at the pearly gates, said, I'm so sorry, men, your rooms are not available yet. He didn't know what to do, so he decided to call Satan and see if he would keep them for a little while. Satan reluctantly agreed. A few hours later, Satan called back, said, Peter, you've got to come get these guys. The Baptist man is saving everyone. The Catholic man is forgiving everyone. And the charismatic has already raised enough money for air conditioning. All right, say it like you mean it. This is my Bible. I am what it says I am. I have what it says I have. I can do what it says I can do. Today, I will be taught the Word of God. I boldly confess, my mind is alert, my heart is receptive, I will never be the same. I am about to receive the incorruptible, indestructible, ever-living seed of the Word of God. I'll never be the same, never, never, never. I'll never be the same in Jesus' name. God bless you. I want to talk to you today about calling over comfort. It's easy to get comfortable in life with things that are less than God's best. We know there's more in us, but we don't want to have to stretch. We don't want to take that risk. What if it doesn't work out? What if the door doesn't open? We can get comfortable with friends that are pulling us down, comfortable with addictions, comfortable with self-pity, always thinking about what we didn't get, how we're at a disadvantage. The problem with staying comfortable is you will miss your destiny. When God is about to take you higher, there will always be this conflict, something you have to choose, comfort or calling. Are you going to stay where you are, not rock the boat, not have to stretch, not have to be more disciplined, not have to push past your fears? Are you going to choose to stay comfortable or are you going to step out in faith and take a risk? If you'll leave the comfort and come into the calling, God will make things happen that you couldn't make happen. But too often we think, when I get the courage, I'll do this. When I have the strength, the confidence, then I'll get out of my comfort zone. Then I'll forgive the person that hurt me. Then I'll deal with this bad attitude. But if you're waiting to feel what you need to feel, you'll be waiting your whole life. You may not ever feel like forgiving that person that did you wrong. You feel bitter. You feel angry. You have to make a move, then God will make a move. You may not have the strength now. That's because God's waiting for you to move. When you step out, strength will come. Courage will come. Favor will come. Are you choosing comfort over the calling? Are there areas where you know you need to make changes? You need to work on a relationship? You need to forgive? You need to stretch? But you're letting fear what people will think, how it seems too hard to keep you in your comfort. God is saying, if you'll choose my calling over your comfort, if you'll do what I'm asking you to do, even though it's difficult, then I'll step in and give you supernatural strength. I'll give you the boldness, the courage, the favor to accomplish dreams, to overcome obstacles, to go where you couldn't go on your own. John chapter 5 there was a man that had been crippled for 38 years. Every day, people carried him on a mat to the pool of Bethesda. There was a legend, they believed, that when the waters bubbled up, an angel was touching the water, and the first person in would be healed. There were five large porches around this pool. It was surrounded by sick people, blind, lame, paralyzed. Year after year, this man came to the pool. I can imagine the first few years, he believed he would get well. He came with expectancy, knowing that it could happen that day. But the first year passed and nothing happened. Then another and another. Now, 38 years later, he wasn't expecting anything to happen. He had tried. It didn't work out. Now, he was comfortable in his dysfunction. He was surrounded by other people that were dysfunctional. This is all he knew going to the pool every day, laying there, talking to his friends that were lame, blind, couldn't walk. Sometimes when we're dysfunctional, we like to get around other dysfunctional people. That way, we feel more at ease. When we're insecure, we find other people that are insecure. When we're struggling with an addiction, we find other people that are addicted. 
No, don't get around people that enable your dysfunction. If you're depressed, don't hang around people that are depressed. If you're fighting an illness, don't go find other people that are sick so you can sit around and talk about your illnesses. Hang around people that have what you want, not people that are struggling with what you struggle with. The enemy would love for you to stay in a limited environment that holds you down, limits your vision, keeps you from dreaming, believing, expecting. Don't fall into that trap. If you're depressed, find some happy friends. If you're addicted, find some free friends. If you're sick, find some healthy friends. If you're broke, find some blessed friends. One day, Jesus showed up at this pool out of all the people there, Jesus came over to this man. He said, do you want to get well? That seemed like an odd question. That's why he was by the pool. But you can be at the right place in the wrong frame of mind and miss your miracle. Jesus knew after all those years, the man was comfortable. He had lost his passion to be well. Instead of saying, yes, I want to get well. That's what I've been believing for. The man said, I can't get well. I don't have anyone to help me. When the angel comes, someone always gets in in front of me. Jesus didn't feel sorry for the man. He didn't say, too bad, you're at a disadvantage. Jesus looked at the man and said, rise, pick up your bed and walk. Jesus asked him to do something that he couldn't do. The man could have said, what do you mean get up? Don't you know I'm crippled? I haven't walked in 38 years. This man heard the call. Jesus told him to rise up, but every thought said, you can't get up. You've been this way too long. He had to make a decision. Am I going to stay in my dysfunction where I'm comfortable, where I've been the last 38 years, or am I going to act on the calling? Am I going to stretch, try something that I've never done? Something rose up in this man. Against all odds, he sat up, Suddenly, strength came into his legs. He stood up and started walking. Instantly, he was healed. None of this would have happened if he would have stayed where he was comfortable. Anytime God is going to do something new in your life, give you more influence, more favor, more anointing, more resources, there's going to be this test of being uncomfortable. Are you willing to stretch, to do something you've never done? Move away from tradition, from certain people, from what you're familiar with. Don't let the comfort keep you from the calling. Where God is taking you is going to require risk. You're going to have to leave what's familiar and step into the